dangerously mentally ill from buying guns. That protects my rights and my family. Tell Congress, don't protect criminals. Vote to protect gun rights and our families with comprehensive background checks. Demand action now. All right, so the ads also target Democratic senators who are undecided on new gun control measures. The NRA is calling Bloomberg's money bomb an attempt by the New York City mayor to impose his will on the American people. They don't want him in his, their restaurants. They don't want him in their homes. Sure, tell him what self-defense firearms to own, and he can't buy America. Political science professor at Hiram College and Patrick Millsaps, Republican strategist and former chief of staff for Newt Gingrich's presidential campaign. Welcome to both of you. Good morning. Hey, Carol. Good morning. Okay, so Jason, the ad features a guy in a pickup wearing a hat, talking about background checks, good optics, doesn't look like he's from New York City. Is right, it effective? Right. I, I mean, all he needed was some chew tobacco and to be watching Hee Haw. I mean, it was great. <laughs> I, but, but here's the thing. I, I don't, I, Bloomberg isn't buying anything. If there's any group of political people in this country who have a right to talk about gun violence, it is mayors of major cities because they're the ones talking to cops every day. They're the ones talking to victims every day. They're the ones dealing with the emergency room costs of people being shot all the time. So I think this is perfectly legitimate lobbying. It's no different than what the NRA does. They're just mad that governors are getting politically active and getting smarter with their optics. Well, and more than one viewer, because I asked this question of my Facebook friends, Patrick, and I'm just going to read you one from Randy uh, about Bloomberg. He's no more buying gun control than the NRA is buying and blackmailing members of Congress to be against it. It's the same thing, isn't it? Well, if they're buying and blackmailing members of Congress, and apparently they failed with Harry Reid since he's the one that's single-handedly dismantling this bill that the Democratic Party said the country needs, um, you know what, I'm for the Bloomberg ads because I think they're going to backfire as much as Mitt Romney's Etch-A-Sketch did. Um, yesterday when Bloomberg was interviewed, he said that uh, this was a way for him to educate people. And, you know, in these red states uh, where I live in South Georgia, you know, we don't need the education from Michael Bloomberg about um, our guns, rights to guns. Look, we are, most, most people are uh, in favor of some type of background checks. In fact, in, in Georgia, to have a, Gary, a carry permit, you have one. Um, what I'm, and the devil's in the details. I am in Eric to implement laws, uh, new laws. So, Jason, Mayor Bloomberg's reputation as, you know, a guy who runs an A for people who are, like, you know, kind of on the fence. This is, this is a political repairing. I mean, you can use all these sorts of scare favor. I don't know if it's going to cause any problems. It might actually raise attention towards the issue. But yeah, and Patrick, that more than one police chief, they're all for background checks. The NRA is fighting back against these ads dollar for dollar, so do you think it's just a little nervous? Well, I don't know who's ner more nervous. I mean, if, if there was such an overwhelming public groundswell of support for this type thing, Bloomberg wouldn't be worried about putting these ads. Uh, the other thing is, is that people keep demonizing uh, the NRA and Wayne LaPierre, and I'll be the first to admit that Wayne LaPierre's post Sandy Hook uh, speech was a rhetorical train wreck. But the fact of the matter is, the NRA is representing a lot of people that are very interested in this in this uh, issue. And if the, again, if there was such a groundwork uh, root swell for this, uh, I don't think Bloomberg would even be worried about um, running these ads. Yeah, you know I just wanted to bring this up because it was so bizarre. The comedian Jim Carrey, he put out this um, gun control kind of ad, and, and you have to kind of watch it because I can't explain it, but it's very offensive. Let's watch a bit of it. <laughs> and on the ones who sell the guns, he'd sick the vultures and coyotes, only the dead. Profiteer from pain and fear. Okay, I know it's from Funny or Die, but it's making it's making the rounds online. Does this sort of thing really help the cause, Jason? I think it does because it brings a different audience. And you, you, you got to remember, Funny or Die has like a sketch of of, of Mike Tyson dan dancing to every little step I take, and Don Cheadle as Captain Planet. So I mean, Funny or Die uses these celebrities for all sorts of different kinds of issues. But I think it's valuable because people are going to pay attention to this. People who aren't watching the news are going to say, "Hey, Jim Carrey talks about this particular issue too." So I, I think it's valuable. Anything that raises awareness and ends up helping out these mayors to represent the police and the people who are victims, I think it's positive for the body politic. 
But it does reinforce a stereotype, doesn't it, Patrick, of, of people who are for gun rights as merciless killers? Well, Jim Carrey uh, preaching about people is like Anthony Weiner teaching about uh, proper Twitter use. Um, it then just have the gun control part, but look at the gun as the end all be all devil of the universe. Well, we'll see what happens after the Easter break when our lawmakers take up the issue of gun control. Jason Johnson, Patrick Millsap, thank you uh, so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, if you'd like to join in the conversation,